Like to me, that's very alarming. And 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 fuck mm. it. But liberty people, you need to get your shit together mm. because those people, they are building something from an engineering standpoint. It's very solid, mm. right? They oh, are yeah. obviously oh, yeah. very competent people, and they are not joking, right? They are here to to build their stuff. So, if you want to keep your freedom. You need to stop fucking around with digital gold and, and whatever, NFT and, and whatever that is. You can make money with those things. That's great, right? But this is your financial freedom that is at play here. And there is like one project in the space that is doing something similar to it, but, <laughs> but with freedom. And it's eCash. And you want to mention its name? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's eCash. But mm. like, even well, the fact this, that this is. This the thing, fact this that the there is just thing, one right? project that is trying to build that is is alarming to me. But the crazy thing is, it's basically the same design, right? Like they, because uh, it works. The design is exceedingly right? similar. Yes. Basically, Satoshi nailed it. Almost nailed it the first time. Because look, look at what we're describing in that paper. It's like ninety-five percent the same thing. But it's like, yeah. If you don't do topological altering, if you don't do a UTXO set, but instead do a UTXO commitment. Then your system can be orders of magnitude more scalable. And also what, what like should be kept in mind that this system is basically what eCash wants to do, right? Yeah. At this point, if eCash fail, but another system like it succeed, and I can still be free in 10 years, I'm very happy, right? right. Obviously, I would prefer Same. eCash to Same. succeed. But if it fails because someone built something better, awesome, right? But come on, people, we need to be working on that. Because if we don't, we're not going to have financial sovereignty in 10 years. And, and this needs to happen not. now. Like this left unchecked in time is the end of financial freedom. Infinity. It's like what happened with GoFundMe for the freedom uh, convoy, right? Except it's the money itself, <laughs> right? right. It, it's not like those people, they don't have a GoFundMe Like when you have a bill, anymore. right? Like a hundred dollar bill, they don't have, and you want to they hand don't it have over. They don't have dollars anymore. They don't have access so like to imagine, dollars. Imagine the equivalent would be like, you have a hundred dollar bill and you want to hand it over to someone, but there's like a force field that like, like burns it or like puts it back into your pocket or whatever. That's like yeah. the equivalent of, of this one. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there is no reason to feel secure because we have Bitcoin and whatnot uh, against this. That that's just like that's the, the problem with Bitcoin right now is that while it has much better properties than fiat, it has it has no scalability, right? So it's just not possible to onboard everybody on Bitcoin with an intermediary. And the same goes for Ethereum. And and most of the alternative, very scalable design that are proposed, they they just are not serious. This is a serious proposal. Because mm. um, this will be like what they call panoptic coin, right? So do you want a panoptic coin yeah. or do you want something that's actually like cash that where there's no trusted third party where payments are sent directly <clears throat> from one party to another? Or do you want something where like the government can be like, uh, well, yeah, no, you said the wrong word on Twitter. Um, you, you are completely excluded from the system. Yeah, at some point they'll do like expiring money because that would be very easy to do on the system. Right? Yeah, like, okay, yeah. here you got, here's your allowance, slave. You can use this. If you don't, like it's gone, right? Well, and at some point, like there's no point of reversal, right? Like how, how does this end? But at some point you're just locked in all the um, freedom minded people die or whatever, right? Like they just have, don't have the resources because they can't participate in the uh, system as good as like, all you have to do is change the incentives a little, right? Like make it inconvenient to be a freedom guy and make it more convenient to be uh, a communist uh, party leader, right? Yep, it's like, uh, basically my analogy is like, uh, Satoshi, like in his chamber, discovered nukes and nobody knew before them before. And then he was just like, okay, here, you can make your own nuke. Like everybody can make their own nuke. And then like everybody discovered that, oh, why don't we just do firecrackers instead, right? Like why, why are we building nukes? Just making firecrackers is much cooler, right? Uh, they make like cool sounds and whatever. And then like uh, the, the, the government realized, oh, wait a second, you can actually make nukes. 
And then they just like spend all their resources focusing on optimizing that, like, like uh, making it reliable, making it fast and everything. And meanwhile, we're still like uh, firing firecrackers, like uh, doing nothing else. And at some point they're like, okay. Well, it's, it's not like we're doing nothing else. We are building more and more fancy firecrackers and different <laughs> colors and different size and different sounds. And they are prettier and prettier and fancier and fancier. And, and we can make like light shows with them and whatnot, you know, like, but, but the government is building nukes. This is, yeah. this is the nuke. So, yeah. Um... I'm in. I'm talking to Amory Seche. Uh, maybe you can introduce yourself. Yeah, so I'm Amory Seche. I created BCH, um, and then uh, it didn't pan out. Uh, people <laughs> were very unhappy with me, so uh, I had to leave BCH. I created the uh, eCash. Since then, uh, I've been working in crypto for many years now, um, and and I've been you know championing value scaling solution. Many of them are relevant to. Uh, the analysis of, of the CDBC paper. So I think it's important that we discuss it. Yeah, and I'm Tobias Ruck. Uh, um, I've been working on BCH. Uh, not as much as Amri. I think I have like two orders of magnitude or maybe three orders of magnitude less diffs. But uh, working on that a little, I uh, uh, pioneered uh, Bitcoin smart cards um, and working on uh, smart contracts on Bitcoin. Now um, doing my own blockchain, Lotus. Um, also worked on uh, RiPay and Saipan. Maybe some people have heard about that before. And yeah, and uh, recently the CBDC paper, Central Bank Digital Currency paper dropped from the Boston Fed and MIT Media Labs. And both Omri and I were very infuriated by the content. <laughs> Uh, for for various reasons and uh, yeah I'm, we'll... I'm, I'm i'm gonna stop you because this is not quite true or this is half true i'd say because yes on one side i'm infuriated on the other side the the engineer is me is is very happy because that's a, a, a lot of validation of many of the technical points that i've been making over the years though i would have liked those technical points to succeed in another context that's exactly my feeling. Yeah, like I, I felt like, like, like uh, you know, one heart. I was like, oh no, this is like, well, why did they? Well, why, why are they allowed to do this and we're not? And on the other hand, like, oh, like, yeah, like, it's basically validated. Like all the all the ideas we've been like working around. You you spearheaded that, right? Like with the scaling Bitcoin. Um, what is it like? Can we go to the moon? Presentation you made like I don't know. Uh, it was ago. Journey to the Moon. I think it's like Journey six or seven moon. years old now, and it explained something similar, very similar to the Milton project. Obviously, um, the part so some part of it are unnecessary in the Milton project because they don't really care about decentralization, but uh, all the, the scaling technologies and all of that uh, for a blockchain are extremely similar to what I was explaining at the time. Yep, yep. Um, okay, let's go so, over it. So yeah, just just Sorry. just for the beginning, the two jokes, uh, like uh, the, the two Easter eggs, uh, I call them trolls. Um, Amory says they're more uh, Easter eggs. So the first one is the, uh, the only reference to payments in the entire payment, uh, in the entire paper, and it's 35 pages long, so it's a big, it's a big one is the, the coffee example. So for example, a user might pay for a coffee, uh, for a coffee in a cafe by sending digital currency to the owner. That's like basically, you know, like the BCH, you know, like all these, these memes. Oh, I paid for my coffee in, uh, in uh, Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash. And all the BCH, uh, no, the, all the Bitcoin maxis, like the small blockers were like, oh no, like you're not supposed to use Bitcoin for a coffee and like kind of ridiculing that. And then now they're like explicitly referencing that use case, um, I think mm -hmm. it feels. Please. Yeah, that use case has become sort of a symbol, right? Like, the, does that project is ever meant to be used to pay for stuff or just to hold? Uh, yeah. It's like, what's the, what's the utility the, of these? The what's crystallization the of, of that ID is paying for coffee or not. Yeah, and it's almost like Alice and Bob, right? It's like, imagine Alice yeah. is going, right? <laughs> it's like in a similar. <laughs> yeah, it's the Alice and Bob of blockchain, uh, yeah. the, the buying a coffee. Yeah, very much. 
<laughs> and the second one is the um the the name of the project hamilton because i was like why is it called hamilton and i just tell you like the first footnote and uh, it's a reference to two hamiltons margaret uh mit computer scientist um who made the nasa guidance system for the apollo project and the second one is uh, alexander the uh, founder for the central bank so it's basically combining the biggest uh, Bitcoin meme, which is to the moon, right? The NASA project and uh, the central bank itself. <laughs> so I think that's, that's I, I got to give it to them. Like, that's pretty good. That's a brilliant name. I had the, I had the Alexander Hamilton reference. I did not have the old one, the Margaret Hamilton. Though when you think about it, the going to the moon is, is a very prevalent meme in crypto and so that's a brilliant reference and and they managed to pack both of them in the name i think that's uh i mean it doesn't say much technically but you know those are people who thought about their project very much it makes me like them a little bit more even though they like want to insult <coughs> us but you know that's... <laughs> <laughs> you know at least they know what they're doing right <laughs> yeah uh so yeah um one thing that i immediately noticed is that this whole thing like the whole code for this it's all open source so you can like go there it's written in c plus plus right like 97 mm -hmm. percent c plus plus and uh probably because like they mostly quote unquote poached or at least they poached Corey fields right which is like a bitcoin core developer he's named, named here Corey Fields, uh, core one of the core lead developers. And yeah, and a very good one, I might add. Uh, I had a few contact with him over the years, and uh, uh, always very impressed. Like he's a very talented guy and, and very professional as well. Mm, yeah, so I I can totally see why they went ahead with that. Like, and from what you can see, like they use like Clang tidy Clang format, so they do know what they're doing, right? So this is more like a research project, but they still like enforce good coding standards and so forth. So probably the idea is that this would morph into the actual thing at some point. But then yeah. like the fact the fact that it's open source, like for me, that was completely surprising because I like like the way I would have imagined it, like they were just cooking something up in their lab, right? Like they literally called lab. And then they would like just give like some access points and be like, no, 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 like. You, we like we are the U.S. government. Like you're not supposed to see any of our sources. Are you crazy? Like this is military secrets, whatever, right? Like whatever they come up with. And the fact yeah, that it's yeah, like open yeah, source, yeah. And it might stay open source, right? For like the well, at least the open the CDBC one. Um, mm -hmm. Then they might have a fork of that for what they actually deploy in, in a couple of yeah. years, but. Uh, but the thing uh, is, we can't know. We, we we can't know that, right? Like if they have some. Yeah, we really can't thing, know. We already don't know if they deploy what is in the repository. Because like one of the biggest, like we, we we can't verify the software they run. Like and, uh, other than like going there and like asking them to like, oh, could we please access the server where all the <laughs> money is? <laughs> so that that won't work. Um, and and I think that uh, like one of the reasons they would do that is like to help the public spot box, obviously, like the, mm -hmm. the Linux the Linux idea. And I think that works relatively well um and but then also like to give like this uh impression that this is like a community project right so, oh we are all working on that like everybody can contribute right and but then it's like more or less a, a walled garden if like somebody wants to do something that's we saw that a little bit with bitcoin right if somebody wants to do something that's like totally against like they will just uh like not merge them. but but it's normal right for any project yeah. you, you know need to have like you need to have a goal for the project. Um, and and yeah. there are always going to be people that, that want to do something that not align with the goal of the project. And, mm -hmm. and the fact that the project is open source, like they can fork it. And even sometimes the fork becomes more prevalent than the original, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, the, GTC, the, like, the GCC that we use now, for instance, is actually a fork of GCC. Um, that, that I think was I called GCC. X at the time. I don't think that'll. Like, I don't think that'll happen here. I mean, maybe may, like, no. Maybe, here, that that will happen for political reasons, but yeah. <laughs> nevertheless, well, like. But this might be. You should always for, like, expect. Like, all sorts of countries could use this, right? This would be just for the, like the. Well, uh, I'd say yes, but if I was a serious country, I would not. Hmm. Well, yeah. Let's let's see let's see what happens, right? Like, if I were to do the the. Um, 
uh, Euro CDBC or whatever they're gonna call it, which you know I'm sure is gonna drop in 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 short order. Um, I would not use that stack. Why? Well, for for reason of sovereignty. Oh uh, yeah, you you're basically handing over your well. Of course, yeah. Then, then it makes sense. You would you would fork it. <coughs> I mean, right? in the you would fork it, make your own thing, and have your own developers pay them like yeah uh, crazy uh, money for like doing nothing because that's how uh, government operates. And then uh, yeah, just have it working. Yeah, I think that I think that makes sense. And also like currently, there's no like evil the platforming and like uh like censorship or like and and even surveillance like it's it's designed to be like very private the 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 way it's currently set up um, uh yes and no. i think we should go over the paper and, and mm -hmm. um you yeah. know like cover those points but it's private for all our users right like user cannot cheat shows our transaction but the validators see all the transactions so so in that sense, the validator, like there is no privacy when it comes to the validator. But there's, but there's no like um, association between keys and users, at least in this design, right? They're just like, hey, people can just make their own uh, public key or whatever, right? Uh, yeah, no, that doesn't need to happen at that level. Mm -hmm. You can you can do that at the end points. And... Yeah, yeah, and they talk about that in the in the paper. Yeah, and it's uh, but it just feels like. Um, they, I think what they'll do is they- Like, wait, not this. only it doesn't need to happen at that level, but I think from, from an engineering perspective, that's from be the, the wrong, the wrong mm. place to make it the happen. The wrong level. Mm -hmm. yeah. And maybe have some authentication on a different level where like you can generate keys or whatever. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be on the on point, right? Mm -hmm. Like, can you, can you talk to that on point or not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and then you authenticate. Yeah, that makes, that makes total sense. But like the, the basic the idea that, that I had is that this is like, what because um, I expected it to be very different like this wasn't um what I expected at all and it like it, it's very like enticing right this is like it almost feels like a project I want to work on because just like of the technical um engineering and also like the way it's currently structured was like oh you just have your public key or whatever so I think what will happen is that a lot of like uh crypto people who are, who are like very into crypto will like embrace that this 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 project Hamilton and be like oh look this cool thing I built on top of that because um, it just looks so so cool, right? And it's so um, it's very crypto-like. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I don't know if it's uh, gonna be adopted by by developer that much. I mean, at the end of the day, it's gonna be some adoption just because the central bank is behind it, right? And the <laughs> government is gonna be behind it, uh, and. I mean, if they if they say this is the new way of doing things, this is going to be the new way of doing things, right? Effectively, uh, but most yes, of the people. Are but just there's a difference. But there's a difference between like the government like telling someone, "Oh, this is like you have to do this," and on the other side, like them like really wanting to use it, right? And I think what will happen there will be like a specific subsection of crypto who are like very who will be very welcoming to this idea and be like, "Oh no, this is actually much better. Like it's much more private." I think that that could be a big argument where like could see people like oh it's well, more to be fair Bitcoin, right? in some respect it's better than banks um so but mm -hmm. but it creates a panopticon <laughs> yeah um which and you can I make mean, all these kind of exist so, with yeah. bank but at least you need to get value or um not very organized to synchronize yeah. and communicate well with each other which in the abstract they could do, but in practice it's not well oiled, you know. Um, uh, There's too many parties. This, like, just... yeah. And here yeah, you, yeah. you just need like a handful of people, right? Like you could probably run this with like, I don't know, 100 people. I don't know. Maybe that's a little too ambitious. But yeah, so uh, I think what will happen is that in like this one is phase one. And in phase two, it'll uh, like there will be more of like fraud, fraud prevention and so forth. But for now, they will just experiment with like, hey, how 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 optimized can we make this thing? Yeah, I, I, like I'm not sure. Like you know, this is a solid core upon which you can build, right? Mm -hmm. And and all the other stuff they can probably be built on top of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um... So yeah, should we go through the little bit more technical details? Let's go. Uh, I think well. 
the introduction, I think, is kind of like we did it, right? In our own words, obviously, they don't use the same word to present it. But let's go over the goal that, that they mentioned, because that part is the first one that was of great interest to me because of how close they were to... Um, <clears> or <throat> close they were to what I said, like, you know, six or seven years mm -hmm. ago, uh, needed like the, the goal that needed to be for, for a blockchain to be actually used as payment. So um, the first one that they point is performance and, mm. and performance um, Actually, comes into two buckets, I'd say. Like uh, one is, one is going to be speed and the other one's throughput, right? So speed is like how fast the transaction confirms effectively like between the time you make a transaction and the time that everybody agrees in the world that the money move from a to b how long does it take and they say it needs to take less than five seconds uh for at least 99 percent of transaction um and it's it's very similar to the research that i made at the time where i concluded that uh the threshold the threshold is effectively five seconds like if it's more than five seconds um the, the ux is is really bad people because the user thinks when it, it lasts work, right? five seconds yeah yeah when you do the transaction and five seconds later it doesn't happen this is when people start to think like is it working or not like is, is this thing broken right five seconds is when this kind of id start to happen so it's it's bad ux if if it's uh if it's more than five seconds but but really the the bar that's gonna distinguish like good user experience from okay it works is is three seconds. Mm. So I I think the the best target is is the best target is three seconds. Um, and if you go above five seconds, you're lost, right? So they are ninety nine percent below five seconds is a very very good uh, target, very much in line with the kind of requirement that they have. Um, then they go for and also like it's it's probably yeah. like for like for developing like uh, or like for like less available uh, maybe counties. If this is just for the US, then like five seconds is probably like very easily achievable. Uh, depends on like the counties where you are. Like if it's like le if internet is less reliable, and I think they took that into account yeah. uh, as well. So the second one is throughput, and I think this is the biggest one. One of the biggest wars have been made uh, over this in in crypto. <laughs> Yeah, so 100k TPS, uh, same, it's a very good target, right? Like if you if you get the number from the various payment processor, such as Visa, MasterCard, or Alipay, uh, you get like peaks of 10k TPS, right? But this system is supposed mm. to do all of them and it's supposed to plan for the future, right? Like presumably in the future, we're going to do more transactions than we do now. And therefore, um, Android KTPS is a very good target. Yeah. I'd say probably the most important is to design the system in a way that it's scalable. So, so people have a bit of a problem, like even technical people, I think uh, quite often they, they misunderstand what scalable means. Uh, scalable doesn't mean that it's fast or that it's as high. What it means is that if I throw twice as much resources at the problem, can I solve the problem twice as big effectively, right? So if I need to throw a certain amount of resources to do 100K TPS, can I throw twice that amount of resources and do 200K TPS? If yes, then the system is scalable. And if not, then the system is not scalable. And Well, you always have some loss, but um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but... Is it around the error or is it like, mm, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Or, a, a big loss? Or is it like a, a, a like fundamental limiting factor? <clears throat> so for example, uh, Ethereum is way harder to um, scale because it has like the transaction ordering thing, which is actually a very hard thing to do. Yeah, and, and a... they, they, they have the same, uh, when we're going to read like further into the paper, mm -hmm. they run into the, the same, like they, they experiment with two different validator architecture yeah. and, and they find out that one is not scalable at all, even though they can, they can get 100 key TPS with it. Mm -hmm. So resiliency, um, I mean, their resiliency constraint is way easier to achieve than than the one of any blockchain mm -hmm. or distributed system. Uh, like permission. Oh, blockchain has so many system, constraints. Right? So, right. <laughs> so on that one, I think they don't break any ground, um, but but they don't need to. So so that's fine. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think about the the privacy part here? 
they achieve privacy between users, right? Which uh, most blockchain do not, right? Um, yes. Most blockchain do not because most blockchain, you can see all the transactions. So here, um, not any user can see any transaction. Um, on the other end, they don't achieve privacy at all when it comes to the validator, right? Like the validator mm. still see all the transactions. So on that front, eh, but they also manage it in, in such a way like privacy can be a scaling an answer in some way. Um, it depends what privacy technology, but some privacy technology well, can like help scale it. And, uh, well, UTXO, for instance, they use UTXO commitment and their request mm -hmm. from the user to resubmit the UTXO when they want to spend it. And mm -hmm. this is like a big scaling opportunity, for instance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I saw that too. Like it's this, I mean, I, put, I tagged in Twitter on that, um, but that they did that. But I think it's a different thing. Yeah. If you if you go look at the hard fork segwit uh, proposal that I made for Bitcoin Unlimited, uh, I think like I saw that seven years yeah. ago. By now, you're gonna find that in it uh, uh, for those very reason. Yep, yep. But we don't have it, so something <laughs> went wrong, I guess. <laughs> uh, so I think one thing is that they are like um, making the making the connection to to cash, right? A CBDC could uh, be designed to offer similar function functionality to cash, right? Mm -hmm. Which I think is like they 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 mentioned that, and I think that could hint to like removal of cash at least down the line, because that would allow it, right? Because they could be like, oh, we already have. Uh, like oh yeah, so it's definitively like not a, a technical argument of the project, but I think I think it's no secret that there is um, there is a willingness from government across the world to just like get rid of cash, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and if they can if they can get something that have a lot of the same property as cash, mm -hmm. but not the one that they dislike. <laughs> um, anonymity, right? The non panoptic. That's very stuff. that's very good for them. Uh, yeah, anonymity, but also look what I think is the most interesting property for cash, which is not the one that most people see when they use it, but I think it's the most important one. This is the fundamental one, uh, and this is the one that they don't get in that paper. Obviously, it's that it doesn't depend on any third party to be processed. Yeah. Right, like well, if one <laughs> person pay another person using cash, they just own the money <laughs> to the other person, and nobody yeah. else is involved. Right, it's yeah. nobody else's business. Yeah, um, that that any transaction happened, and I think that is uh, extremely important. Like that is a pillar of financial freedom. If you don't have that, you don't have financial freedom because all the transaction are subject to the authorization of some third party. Um, yeah, and this is where this one and uh, cryptos obviously differ because um, Bitcoin doesn't need a third party uh, to validate because they're like self-evident kind of the transactions. Mm -hmm. And um, here you need the stamp, like you have to you have to send it to their server and then you get a reply. That's how. That's how. Yeah, yeah exactly. And yeah. Uh, obviously it's not described in my paper, but you can add a layer on top of that that, you mm -hmm. know, uh, authorize or not the transaction. Mm. what we'll get to uh oh no let's let's get to that later um, well and you know it's gonna be boiling frog right at the beginning there are not gonna be any gain of control on that front and then well but did you use the system to fund terrorism or to buy yeah. drugs or to, like you know whatever and and it's gonna be something that is pretty objectionable so everybody is kind of angry that well you cannot have to do something right and then you have the system to do something and then we're like oh but no this dude is He's racist. I don't know, like <laughs> buying something over the limits that oh, it's supposed yeah. to mm -hmm. be to, to without declaring or something like that, right? It's going to be like much and much more minor stuff and little by little, it's and, going to be well, and the end goal, we control yeah. your money. <laughs> yeah, at some point they'll do like expiring money because that would be very easy to do on the system. Right? Yeah, like, okay, yeah. here you got, here's your allowance, slave, you can use this. If you don't, like it's gone, right? Uh, yeah, you know, like government are very patient and they are very good at doing that where, you know, like they move forward, they move forward, they move forward. And at some point you're like, whoa, 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 right? Like that's, that's way too far. And they back down a little. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah. And they but wait a bit. Just a bit. And they yeah. move forward, and they, they move forward, they move forward, they move forward. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> way and too they back far. Up a little, and they wait a bit. And, and they do that. And, and they can literally do that for like decades. Yeah. Right. And, and we see and, that with the honk, we see that with the honking, right? That's like the whoa, whoa, whoa part, right? And so they will down go like they will go down a little bit, right? Like we can already yeah, see and, it. Yeah, and then people are like, you know, they look back and they're like, well, 20 years ago it was completely different, right? <laughs> what happened? Like, oh, well, what happened? happened? <laughs> and like you don't what even happened? have to like well, you don't even you know, have to do any know. kind of conspiracy because that's like how like that's almost like human nature to do that, right? Like you, I, like mm -hmm. any kind of abusive relationship will be like that, right? You go as far as you can, then there's drama, and then you uh, uh, backtrack a little and like let it settle. Oh yeah, this right? is not specific to that project at all, right? Like it's like, <laughs> it's like oh, we need to do something for ecology, for instance, and and for the environment, and and you know, like who could disagree with that? Like nobody wants to trash the environment, obviously. But then you know, like ten years later, you find yourself you cannot even use a straw anymore, right? And and everybody wants to like, oh, did that happen, right? But it's little by little, you know, um, it's little by little. Yep, yep. All right, let's get back. So um, just this this one aside they, they give. In this entire paper, they do not address any fees. So the, the entire thing will be free, at least in their current design. Mm -hmm. um, no, no compliance and fraud controls and other design considerations. So all of that, what we've just described will be in a in a future phase. So yeah, so fee they probably want to address at that level, or even maybe you know you just need to pay to access the endpoint, you know, something like that, and mm. and boom, you have the fees, right? Like I don't think I don't think any of that to require major redesign of anything that they've built, right? Yeah. So yeah, I oh, yeah, um, and I think then the most important part, the one that like really surprised me is the design of the system and especially the uh, UTXO design. I don't know. I mean, it, it makes didn't, sense. Did it did not surprise sense. me at all. I proposed those ideas for years and tried to get traction. No, it just surprised me that that is like the what the CBDC will look like, right? Because I was like, oh, wow. Uh, like it's the most scalable thing. But, is it? Yeah, uh, it's the most scalable thing. So it's not that surprising that they would go for that design. Uh, what is more surprising to me is why those ID have been fought against so hard um, in in the more like freedom loving part of the ecosystem? Mm. Because like to me that's very alarming and 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 fuck mm. it, but liberty people, you need to get your shit together mm. because those people they are building something from an engineering standpoint. It's very solid, mm. right? They oh, are yeah. obviously oh, yeah. very competent people. And they are not joking, right? They are here to, to build their stuff. So if you want to keep your freedom, you need to stop fucking around with digital gold and, and whatever, NFT and, and whatever that is. You can make money with those things. That's great, right? But this is your financial freedom that is at play here. And there is like one project in the space that is doing something similar to it, but... <laughs> But with freedom and it's eCash. And you want to mention its name? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's eCash. But yeah. like even well, the fact this, like, this is this the thing, fact this that is the there is just thing, one right? project that is trying to build that is is alarming and it's, to me. But the crazy thing is it's basically the same design, right? Like they uh because it works. The design is exceedingly right? similar, yes. It's incredibly similar. And, and like actually they like uh and and you like you've been posting that, I've been communicating that. Um that uh, like all these small changes they did, like all the differences you and I wanted to do anyway, right? Like like the having the output yeah. separate and so forth. So yes. yeah, that's that's like where the frustration is. Like everybody's focused on like NFTs and whatever, but nobody's working on like the, the real goal. Like it's almost yeah, like you like, have to defend that let, you work Let me on explain the problem. Let me explain the problem. Because like people, I think they just don't get it, right? Bitcoin, it's great, right? But this thing is, it's not scalable. And Ethereum, it's great, but it's not scalable. And the problem with that is that as more people use it, people have in this imagination that they're going to use those, those crazy root Goldberg machine, right? But what's going to happen is that they're going to use intermediaries, right? And this is what is up. Like, 
It's not what's going to happen. It's what is happening right now. Most people it's already happened. It's already Most over. The mempool is empty. Base, right? The mempool is empty. <laughs> yeah, the mempool is empty. People use Coinbase. They don't use Bitcoin. And it's great for Coinbase, but we're back to square one. We are back to square one because the day is a Coinbase turn evil or more because just Coinbase turning evil, everybody would use another um, yeah. uh, uh, another company, right? But but the day there are regulation that constrain those company to do whatever the regulation tell them to do, they will have to do it. And there is no opportunity for all the Bitcoin user right now to use the blockchain. It's just not possible. Um, yep. Yep. And, and if we talk about the kind of scale that this project is targeting, it's way beyond the size of Bitcoin right now, right? So like just would... onboarding the number of users that this kind of system is going to have on Bitcoin proper, not on Coinbase, but on Bitcoin proper, just processing the transaction to onboard those people would take many months, if not years, just yep. to onboard them. It's, it's just not possible. Um, and that means that the freedom movement is high because there have been crazy gain made over the past 10 years, and that's awesome. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to shit on that because that's awesome. But being high on those games is how you don't see or you're gonna get screwed. And this paper that I have in front of me right now is is reality is the screwing up happens. Yeah. Like and not having you're... an alternative to this. Is all the screwing up up? So I want to invite you people, where to come and contribute to eCash like we do, or even to build your own project that compete with it and use this kind of similar technologies. Yeah, maybe right? Fork because it, at this right? point, fork it and strap proof of work on it or something. <laughs> yeah, like at this point, if eCash fail, but another system like it succeed, and I can still be free in ten years, I'm very happy. Right? right obviously i would prefer Same. cash to Same. succeed but if it fails because someone built something better awesome right but come on people we need to be working on that because if we don't we are not gonna have financial sovereignty in 10 years and and this needs to happen much. now because this will be like what they call a panoptic coin right so do you want a panoptic coin yeah. Or do you want something that's actually like cash, that where there's no trusted third party, where payments are sent directly <clears throat> from one party to another? Or do you want something where like the government can be like, uh, well, yeah, no, you said the wrong word on Twitter. Um, you, you are completely excluded from the system. Like you, you cannot make any transaction. Or, yeah, because if you or maybe that better they happen... just make like screws. They just screw in the uh, thumb screws or whatever. Just make it a little inconvenient. Yeah, if you think that will happen, it's happening with GoFundMe and Kickstarter and stuff like that today, right? right? In a few years, it's going to happen with your bank, right? And as cash disappear to move those stuff, as this happened with your bank and with that stuff, you're screwed. Your complex is screwed. You have no money. And without money, you have no food, you have no shelter, you have no nothing. Well, and at some point, like, there's no point of reversal, right? Like, how, how does this end? But at some point, you're just locked in. All the um, freedom-minded people die or whatever, right? Like, they just have don't have the resources because they can't participate in the uh, system as good as, like, all you have to do is change incentives a little, right? Like, make it inconvenient to be a freedom guy and make it more convenient to be uh, a communist uh, party leader, right? And once you have that in place, like... Uh, the only way it can really uh, get struck down is by hyperinflation, but then they just create a new, right? They just say, okay, we changed the system over, now it's a new thing. And, you know, I've been talking to people on Twitter, just like, I don't know why I did that, but like, they've been like, oh no, Bitcoin. Like, I, I understand Bitcoin better than you and you like, uh, just of course we're retarded. And Bitcoin doesn't, that doesn't solve anything. And I'm like, yeah, like, read, read, that, read that paper. Like, they are way far ahead of uh, anything that like and, and they're like oh no 
we'll just be like, uh, we just have a million Karl Rittenhouses, right? And then, like, yeah, but you know, how are you going to uh, organize? How are you going to, how are you going to like, um, uh, do, do anything, right? You'll just be locked in your thing. You'll have- I mean, uh, like, let's, right? let's be realistic. On that project, the liberty movement could have had a seven year head start. Yeah. Right. Maybe because even more, right? <laughs> maybe even more, right? Because like I described something like that seven years ago, but those ideas that were in there, I mean, like most of the idea, are not mine. I essentially like bundled them together and be like, Hey, if I take all those good ideas that many people had and we bundle them together and we add Bitcoin some scalable, new, right? We get a very scalable blockchain. Um, so, so many of those ideas they predate me. I did not come up with all those ideas. Um, it's not, you know, my my intention to to say that I did. Uh, I, I just did propose to bundle them all together seven years ago. Um, that means that at least I could and and. And if I could, many other people could have uh, as well, I think. And, and clearly, yeah. like someone, someone like the people writing that paper uh, um, certainly could, because they are. Yeah. Uh, and, and they have the resources to make it happen, and, mm -hmm. and they're going to pull together, right? So if you, like, there is no reason to feel secure because we have Bitcoin and whatnot uh, against this. That, that's just like, that's... That's when you feel secure in your position, so you don't even like, know like to hopium. defend yourself anymore. It's like similar to hopium. How is it like? You like, are high uh, on crack. <laughs> yeah, you, you, yeah, you, you like completely like. Oh, nothing will happen. Therefore, you don't prepare, right? Like if you yeah. are paranoid that they are gonna get you, all like every day you are gonna like build a bunker or whatever, and then like just if like a, a large percentage of people do that then like almost like by definition it, it it won't go it's like it won't happen right because like people like completely over prepared or something here it's the opposite is the case right like everybody thinks they're like super prepared and then like uh you know they can just go ahead and uh, with the with their cbdc and completely enslave us uh, so so the, the problem with bitcoin right now is that while it has much better properties than fiat it has it has no scalability, right? So it's just not possible to onboard everybody on Bitcoin with an intermediary. And the same goes for Ethereum. And, and most of the alternative, very scalable design that are proposed, they, they just are not serious. This is a serious proposal. Mm. Um, Can you maybe explain the difference between uh, Ethereum transaction model, like the account model? and uh, uh, the model they, they picked, the UTXO model, and why one is, uh, why, why they picked one over the other and why you picked one over the other. The so let's explain, issues, yeah, let's explain right? the, the difference between UTXO and, and account-based. Mm -hmm. So an account-based model is actually what people understand usually uh, better, right? It's easier, to, like it's more intuitive for people. So an account model is like your bank account, right? You have an account number and there is an amount of money in that account and you can spend, Sorry. Oh, okay, sorry. You can uh, you can you can spend and account, right? The problem with that is that all the transactions need to be ordered because they like say if I spend if I send some money to you and I send some money to someone else, maybe the two transaction they cannot spend the whole money, right? Like maybe I don't have enough money in my account. To, to send the transaction, to send those two transactions. But maybe I have enough money in my account to send every one of those, right? So technically all the transactions are valid. I just don't know the one that are invalid depending on the orders in which I select them, right? So it forces to have an atomizer like architecture, which is the one that is not scalable. Um, whereas the UTXO model, you can have both architecture to validate. And the UTXO model is, it's, it's like coins, effectively, right? So yeah, every transaction, your... like you assemble a bunch of coins and like you, you forge them together yeah. and you break them apart again. That's like the model. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so yeah, you get the coins and, and then you, you split the coins between the party. And every time you receive money, you receive new coins. Like you receive a new set of coins. 
that is separate from, from the other one. And when you spend them, you actually specify which coin you're spending, right? Yeah. So now and they, they even it's call not it about an account wallet. with an amount. If I send a transaction to you, I'm going to send, okay, those specific coins I'm going to send to Tobias and those specific coins I'm going to send to someone else. And now the system sees that those are two disjoint set of coins. Those are not the same coins. And therefore, those transactions, they don't interact with each other at all, and they can be processed at the same time uh, with, with no specific ordering. You can make it very scalable. And mm -hmm. the way translating the Bitcoin-like model is by having uh, either the transaction in any order in the block or the transaction in the canonical order in the block, but not in topological order. Because mm. um, it's very hard to sort that and organize that. Yeah, sorting topologically is, is, is just... It's not a it's not a process that parallelizes, right? So now you have the topological sort or topological ver verification of the sort. Which is why you get these, the serial. Which is why you get yeah, this exactly. 10x difference, right? It's good. It's good. Like if you get 10x anywhere outside, like in in computer science, 10x is like okay, yeah, that's nice. But if you get that somewhere outside, like in racing or whatever, if you have a car that's 10 times faster, you're like holy shit, like <laughs> it's like a complete <laughs> different like thing, right? Yeah, you're not even in the same category. If you understand just the difference between UTXO model and account-based model and why they went with the UTXO model, you already have like a huge, you understand uh, way more about how, how this technology, uh, like yeah. why this works so well. Yeah, so the UTXO doesn't- Maybe like we should the... say what a UTXO is. Did you say that? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, no, we should say what it is. So to be able to validate a transaction, you need to do a few things. The first one is that you need to validate that the transaction is valid, that the signature are correct and all of that. But you need to validate that the coins that are being spent by the transaction actually exist, right? And, and so there is a database uh, in, in the software that manage the network that is called the UTXO set. It's the set of all the UTXO that have not been spent yet. Yeah, they referenced that. Here. Yeah. The UTXO set is a big scalability problem, right? Because it's effectively a database of all the coins that exist. And it's, it's all the coins that exist in the system and, and the condition under which they can be spent, mm -hmm. right? And this database is is pretty big um, and, and the more users there are in the system and the, the bigger the database is. Mm. So the first problem is that how do you make the database smaller? And one thing that they propose is that instead of storing the UTXOs in the database, you just store a commitment to those UTXOs. Here, so a commitment yeah, is, is a yeah, it's, it's like a fingerprint. You don't have you, you don't know what the UTXOs are, but if the UTXO is given to you, you can verify that it has the right fingerprint, right? And you just need to store the fingerprint, which is much smaller than the UTXO. So that the first thing that they do, um, so that reduces dramatically the UTXO database. If the UTXO database is smaller, it's more, you know, like you can, you can grow it bigger <laughs> with the same yeah. amount of resources, right? So it scales better. Um, so that's the first half of it. The second half is that if I send a transaction and I'm saying I'm spending those coins and here is the signature that said I can spend those coins, the way the transaction needs to be validated is in several sequential steps, right? And the first step is we're going to query the UTXO hmm. and check if we're going right? to check what the, what the UTXOs are like, what the condition to spend each coins are, right? And then based on those conditions, we're going to verify the signature in the transaction. And if everything checks out, we're good to go. The problem with that system is that you, the, like the same system need to do the fetching in the database and then verification, and those two steps need to happen sequentially. So they flip the thing on its head because now they just mm -hmm. have the fingerprint of the UTXO, they ask the user to provide the UTXO with the transaction. So because they only store the fingerprint, 
they need you to provide the UTXO that specify what the conditions are to spend the money. Um, once you do that, you can verify the transaction by itself. You have all the information in the transaction to verify the transaction. Yeah, here they, they say it has very different scalability profiles. Yeah. Um, so one of them they call transaction local validation. And probably this is like a fully self-contained thing where like even if you're not the central bank and you don't have any info, you can verify that this is true where you just check the signatures. And yeah, it says you don't require access to shared state and existence validation, which does. And uh, the important thing uh, here is that the different scalability profiles where the transaction local validation requires mostly compute resources. Um, so you it just throw more. <laughs> yeah, and you could, you could shard that. Like it's probably like uh, embarrassingly parallel or something, right? Yeah, um, because each transaction yeah. Like the computation you need to do the on map, each transaction basically. only depend on the transaction. Yeah. Right. So if you have twice as many transactions, you can put twice as many computers and they can do like twice as many verifications. It might even be like super scalar because you can go in lockstep or something, right? Uh, um, there is some batching that you can do, but it's not. Yeah. I mean, like at some point, it just doesn't pay out. Uh, and, but and but the yeah. Other one is the other one and, and the other validation. one is the IO, which is verifying that the coins are in the UTXO set. Um, but but once you do that, first you can do both at the same time um, yeah. instead of doing one and then the other. Uh, and whichever is scarcer to you, you can do second if you want to economize resources, right? So for instance, if the IO part is more expensive, and you have a bunch of compute resources, you can run the compute resources on all the transaction and only the one that pass, you send them to the IO step, right? Or conversely, if no compute is more expensive, but IO is cheap to you in your setup, well, you can do the IO part. And if that checks out, you send it to the compute part, right? So you can scale your architecture de depending on, on the cost of different resources that you have and, and the different constraints that you have. So, so that's, and what you're saying That's is that, so you build a very scalable system. So what, what you're saying is this system, which is very smart, you cannot do that on Bitcoin. You cannot do that on Ethereum, like at all. And uh, Ethereum is heavily IO bound, right? Like that's the one big yeah. thing. Like they do basically just <clears throat> uh, disk searches. Um, you can't do that on Bitcoin Cash right now. Yeah, you could do that on, on any Bitcoin-like system. Uh, but you have to change hard it. Fork. Yeah, 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 you have to and not only you have that, to change you have to the change transaction the, format. So every wallet also has to upgrade, right? So, so every like wallet has to upgrade. upgrade. So this is a huge upgrade, yes. Yeah, which is you know, like I've proposed Mitra in the past, where it's like, okay, let's do that, and and also 10 other things, just because we can do that only once, really. Yeah, we can update the transaction format on on the you know <laughs> very regularly, I'd say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's that's like every two hundred years. Yeah. yeah, that's exceedingly difficult to do. Um, but that's that's why we need people to to help us on on that one yeah. because that one, like that one, is another one that we get like a ton of scaling good of. Um, like, if you can change that, you can completely shut validation and scale the different resources that you need uh, based on the actual workload of the system. You can even like tune the way it works uh, based on on the actual workload that you have live. I mean, it's it's um, it's how you would want to build a highly scalable blockchain, really. Yeah. So it was just to like they made a typo here, so this apostrophe should be there. So therefore, these people have no idea what they're doing, and we're and we're safe, right? <laughs> But what, what, I, what I like is the non-malleability, right? Like basically this is yeah. SegWit, right? Which- No, um, this is much better than SegWit because this is much oh, better yeah. than SegWit because all the transactions are SegWit effectively, right? Like it's oh, hard yeah, for yeah, SegWit. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's what and, we did in Lotus. We were like, no, let's remove that shit. <laughs> Fork SegWit is much better. Um, one of the reasons I proposed out for SegWit at the time is, is for that very reason. Because when you do SegWit, 
you can make a transaction that is not malleable if you want with SegWit, like it is oh. on PC. But you cannot rely on the fact that transactions are not malleable, right? Because some transactions are still malleable. Because mm. like you could have a SegWit input and a non-SegWit input, and then like the second yeah. one is totally malleable. Yeah. So, so the constraint that you have in designing your system needs to be the constraint of a system where transactions are malleable. You know, as long as one transaction can be malleable, you need to handle that case. Um, whereas they went with, okay, we hard fork SegWit effectively. So no, mm -hmm. none of the transactions are malleable. So now we can rely on the fact that they are not malleable to build our stuff, which is um, another source of problem that is just like by design eliminated. Yep, yeah. And I think this is something that um, like they know what they're doing, obviously. Like this, this all shows it. Like these are all these little changes that you need to do and, and they're just a handful right like all the things we listed like we expanded on them but you could you could count them on like i don't know a few fingers like it's basically the the uh, utxo set that changed you have the output in the transaction and the non uh, malleability right mm -hmm. and then and if you did those things you had like you'd had a scalable blockchain right <laughs> isn't that crazy um yeah, effectively, the, the three things that really matter here are, yeah, exactly like you point out, like any order, transaction in any order, uh, be able to process transaction in order, order, um, having UTXO commitments, commit, commitments to, yeah, commitments to the UTXO instead of the UTXO themselves, and providing the UTXO with the yeah. transaction and make those transactions valuable, right? And all of that allows you to build a node that is orders of magnitude more scalable um yeah. and and they have some good uh if you go down when they explain how the validator works they have some good oh, schemas that explain oh, yeah, yeah. uh yeah, that sure. it this doesn't one? have to be the case um no? is it the one like that's the one from the atomizer there is oh you mean the, the shard, one the that is more one? interesting yeah this this more interesting one yeah exactly right mm -hmm. so you have you have a coordinator the coordinator does nothing <laughs> right like well, but effectively yeah. right the, the coordinator well, um, we can we can go through the steps and like uh expand mm -hmm. right because i think this 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 they will like i mean everybody who has uh, brain cells in the uh, federal reserve uh, well okay people who anyway so they will probably pick the second option right and so it, it might be interesting to go through that one um yeah I mean, it sucks that it's <laughs> over two pages, but yeah, we can jump around. So um, yeah, the first one, user submits a valid transaction to Sentinel. And this would be like, uh, in, in Bitcoin, the equivalent would be like sent raw transaction or whatever. So you had, like, this would be- Yeah, so all the, the Sentinel, in their model, the Sentinel is the part of the system that does the transaction local validation, right? So the Sentinel is gonna validate the signature and stuff like that. And because the Sentinel don't need any state, Right, it can trans it, it can validate a transaction in the vacuum. Um, <laughs> therefore, you if could you lock it in a box. Many, yeah, if you have twice as many transactions, you put twice as many Sentinel. This part of the system is like one hundred percent perfectly scalable. Mm -hmm. Then the second one, Sentinel converts the transaction to a complete transaction and forwards to the coordinator. I think this is really cool, and the comes from yeah. A, so basically, they remove design. they remove all the SegWit data. Yeah. Right. The the width that's actually a very that. large part, right? Like that's all the transaction uh, transaction sixty. Yeah, that's probably like a, a good third of the transaction. Mm. Um, is is uh, maybe even more data. if you have if you have, if you like uh, uh, accumulating coins that could be like up to like I don't know, 60, yeah, 70 percent, right? It depends on the type of transaction, but effectively, yeah. like they remove all the the signatures and stuff like that from the transaction, and then they send to the coordinator, basically only the, here is the coin that I spent, here is where they are going, right? Mm. That's all there is now. Everything else is, is gone, right? And the coordinator knows because it comes from a Sentinel that everything that is gone was valid. Otherwise the Sentinel would just have dropped the transaction. So then the third one is the coordinator. Uh, so it forwards it to a coordinator, coordinator and then the coordinator mm -hmm. splits the input and output um, parts into the different shards. So maybe you can uh, explain sharding, just like the general idea behind that. And then we can go into how they do that. So what's sharding? 
Yeah, the idea of sharding is that you're going to have a set of servers, um, and each server is going to address a subset of the problem, right? And if your problem can be processed in a way where different subsets are you know, uh, processed independently, then each one of the shard can process its part of the problem and then return the result. So for instance, um, like, like you type Lady Gaga on Google, right? And Google is gonna like come back to you with a set of websites that you know, fully are relevant to Lady Gaga. But there is like a, a gajillion website to search for, right? So are you gonna do like, if you have your, your server to which you send the request to just crawl to all the website that, <laughs> that Google knows and come back with like the set of one that are relevant to Lady Gaga, your request is just gonna take hours mm -hmm. to process. That's this is not what happens because when you send a request to Google, you know, like uh, not even a second later, you have an answer. So what happens? Well, there are many servers in the Google data center and each of them process some subset of the website that Google knows. Right, and there are thousands of those, and your like the server to which you send the request is gonna send to each shard. Hey, I'm interested in Lady Gaga. Send me what you have. Right, and each one of those shards is gonna look through the website they know, and look for websites that are relevant to Lady Gaga, and send them back to a coordinator, and and then the coordinator is gonna you know order them and put them on your screen. Like it works because looking if one web page is relevant to Lady Gaga is completely independent from looking if another web page is relevant to Lady Gaga. They, they, they don't interfere right? so with one, each other. Say one could. of the servers indexes Wikipedia, right? Mm -hmm. So this server is going to look through the Wikipedia pages and find the page for Lady Gaga and return mm -hmm. that, right? And another one is going to index, say, Facebook. And it's going to look through all the Facebook pages and find a fan page for Lady Gaga and read on that, right? The, so the work that each one of those right? servers is doing doesn't depend on the work that the other server is doing, right? So you can send your request to a thousand different shard and they're all gonna process this and return the result to you. And if no, you want to search through 10 times as many websites, you can have 10 times as many shard and- And you just send 10 times as many messages, yeah. And yeah, and it goes just as fast. Yeah, like I mean, how, they, how they do it here is they, they split it. They take a set of transactions that have been pre-selected by Sentinel, right? And each of those transactions have input and outputs. So the coordinator is going to look at those input and outputs and send them to the relevant shard, right? Because all, those, all the processing that needs to, input, to happen on the input and the output is just like, does that input exist? Yes, no. And can you create that output? Yes, no. And that's it. And therefore, um, all the work is independent. So different shops can do the different work. But presumably in a set of transactions, because all those IDs are cryptographic hash, you like given a sufficiently large set of transactions, you're gonna hit all the shot all the time. Yeah. So it will it will automatically like you could say this is these are all the transactions that start with a zero, these are all the transactions that start with a one, and so forth. Right? Yeah. And you could yeah, scale exactly. that up to as many as you want. And that way it's you only... like the, the UTXO that starts with a zero, the UTXO that starts with a one, and so on. Yeah. Modern yeah. Yeah, transactions. Exactly. But but yeah. that's basically the IDs. And mm -hmm. and each shard is gonna return a that shard exists or not. And and so they do two round trips. And you might right? even so like one of them is yeah, anyway. sending all the IDs of all the inputs and outputs so that they can be locked in the shard. And then there is a commit phase. And yeah, exactly. That's a that's a fourth and fifth phase, right? So basically what they do. Yeah, exactly. So you need to do it in two steps, right? Because maybe one transaction said coins from A to B, and another one said coins from B to C. Mm -hmm. Right? So so the ETX, so A, B, and C are gonna be sent to the relevant shard with the relevant operation. And the shard cannot really decide before it has all the operation. Like maybe the shard received, oh, you need to spend B. I was like, I don't know about B, but I'm gonna mm -hmm. like keep that on the side. And then later on, there is another transaction that is like, hey, you create B. And the shard is like, okay, I have one create B, one spend B, good for me, right? Right, works. Um, 
<clears throat> yeah, so, so you have the first phase where you send all the operation to the shard, and then you have a second phase where you tell the shard, okay, I send all the operation, then you can commit, and everything that doesn't check out, you return to me that it doesn't check out, right? So for instance, if you have one create B, but two spend B, the shard is going to be like, uh -uh, I cannot, I cannot spend B twice. Therefore, this set of transaction is, is, is no good. So this is the, the fifth step. Uh, and then the, the sixth, the sixth step. Well, now it's like, now we're basically almost done, right? Now we're just cleaning up more or less. Yeah. So, um, so, so now it's delete the sixth yeah. step. Like if everything was valid, the the sixth step is effectively like just applying you know, writing change. that no yeah. problem happened, it's over, right? Like just everybody yeah. agree with each other that it's over. And if something was invalid in there, it's everybody like cleaning up the thing and 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 deciding that it's over as well. Yeah, that's the sixth step. And then yeah, and then the coordinate data itself discards like the local data he probably had. Like, okay, like I, I keep this batch in reserve, and then you know, it's not committed. Now I can drop it for a new batch or something. Yeah, exactly. And and then and that's basically like if you if you view this as like a point of sale system or like a user wallet, like you go through this entire thing, like this whole machinery happens. With this this commitment, it goes back to the sentinel, and the the one sentinel, like this would be the endpoint. That you're connected to then goes back to your wallet and it's like okay it went through the machinery you're good or it goes down and says like no this transaction was rejected and like doesn't uh, change the the set in the um in the shards yeah so what is important in there is that first you have the sentinel the sentinel are 100 percent scalable you can have twice as many sentinel and process twice as many transactions they just do they just do compute resources right so they just need like cpu or maybe gpu to accelerate some of the tasks but mm. that's it right and and embarrassingly you can have like as that. many of them the coordinator is really the part that is not that scalable but at the same time the coordinator like doesn't really need to be scalable at all because it does pretty much nothing right it's just yeah it just assembles stuff and sends it out and yeah it just waits. send message to the shard it's mostly waiting and, and very <laughs> And then, and then, uh, yeah, exactly. Like tell the shot what the other shot are doing, right? That's that's all it does. So it doesn't do very much. So that's not a huge problem. And then the shot they process the part of the transaction that is non-local, right? So verifying that the UTXO exists and and maintaining that state. And and all of that is parallel as well. Like each shot does a job that doesn't depend on the other shot. Mm. So. So all the work as well can happen in parallel there. So if there are twice as much work to do, you can have twice as many shard or maybe change the shard machines, you know, like the server that power the shard to, to be bigger, bigger, better mm. machines, right? Right. However you want to do it, right? But the point is all the parts that do actual work are 100% scalable like physically slow, so, right? Like mm -hmm. if you cannot buy a server big enough to do it, you can put two server and still do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you just you just buy more resources and that's it. Whereas with other systems, with the atomizer, like this less scalable version, you need like with the same amount of resources, you just get less um um how do you say like you just get less transactions per second because you have this thing here which basically has to sort all the transactions and sorting stuff yeah, is actually non-trivial yeah the thing so. is yeah yeah that thing is is just like that step in the process is not scalable mm. in nature and it does too much so work. and also what what like should be kept in mind that this system is basically what eCash wants to do right yeah yeah, yeah, there is a very good presentation by uh, Shabash and Floor, I think, uh, explaining all mm -hmm. that good work. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, it's uh, like it's. I, th I think uh, is there anything else? I think we we covered most of it. No. I think we covered the interesting uh, technical parts. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just like this is very technical, right? This is in incredibly technical, but uh, I hope we <laughs> made it a little bit easier to understand. Uh, just just like one thing that I like realized that basically Satoshi nailed it, almost nailed it the first time, 
right? He was like just entering this entirely unknown space and like didn't know anything about him just and he, he wasn't even like a good a good coder or anything right you can go back in time and like see oh like actually the yeah uh, the code that he wrote was uh, pretty scary to yeah. say the least and some of it was a tried well, said uh, that right like he, he he made like a presentation and like the, the the code is like really really bad and but still this system here is very very similar like it's like there's just like these three changes right that they did they even used the same hashing algorithm they didn't even go for sha3 or something right and uh yeah and basically yeah it. i i i like the part that surprised me the most is that he got the utxo model right right because to me to. that's not an obvious like to me the account model right? like if i were to design this from scratch with no prior knowledge of anything, I would probably have built it with an account model. Yeah, same, right? Because you, you wouldn't think of that. But I think it is because he started working on uh, RPOF, right? Like reusable proof of work. RPOF, and then yeah. He, he had, I mean, it's it's still genius, right? I'm, I'm just like trying to figure out how could he possibly have gotten to this idea, right? Because it's so unintuitive yeah. for anyone. But, but who at the same anything. time, it's, it's clear that he kind of stumbled onto it. <laughs> I'd say because, because look, look at what we're describing in that paper. It's like 95% the same thing, but it's like, yeah. if you don't do topological ordering, if you don't do a UTXO set, but instead do a UTXO commitment, then your system can be orders of magnitude more scalable. Well, it can be scalable, right? It can be scalable at all, yeah, because uh, yeah. before before <laughs> that, it's just those, like the it's, system is not very scalable, and that's kind like of like like Ethereum, like they they have to completely redesign everything in order to be like uh, scalable, right? Ethereum two point like they just have to shard, but it's like the shards are just almost like different blockchains, right? Yeah, exactly. They shard. They, they, what what is meant by shard? in the ethereum space is very different from that yeah yeah right and and the trade-off that they make is that well they can have shard that operate independently but that means that moving liquidity from one shot to the other is more difficult so whereas here creating, so before it was a rube goldberg there's none of that and after Ethereum 2.0, it will be like an Uber Rube Goldberg machine, right? You'll have to handle like 5,000 more cases, right? <laughs> like, okay, not only can like there be like, uh, I don't know, some bug in the EVM or there can be like uh, ordering attacks, right? Or like mempool attacks. Now there can also be like inconsistencies between shards that you like exploit uh, to extract more value. So that'll be fun to observe what, what kind of attacks the... Uh, they will come up with on Ethereum. I mean, but we got to be honest as well. And, and I think like to the credit of the Ethereum community, even though they cannot have a root Goldberg, well, they're committed to it, right? It's not like they can change everything. Um, and, and they have a fairly successful ecosystem on top of it, right? Oh, um, yeah. So, you know, sometimes you got to do with what you have. And what they are doing with what they have is, is pretty amazing. And... What I find really sad is that building something like that is like an order of magnitude cheaper and simpler than, than what exists in, in Ethereum, right? But in the rest of the space, there is just not the willingness to do it, except except for the CDBC, right? Which, <laughs> I mean, like, it's so sad. It's right? so like, ironic, right? <laughs> it's so sad that, that the central bank is the one that's going to do it, right? Because <laughs> this is the simple way. Right. If you don't have all the historical baggage of the EVM and all of and the account model and all of that, this is the way you build something that is scalable. Yep. But instead, we get crypto kitties and NFTs. <laughs> all right. So maybe, maybe we want that, to wrap that up. Like, oh, oh, yeah. I mean, we, we we pretty much wrapped it up, right? Yeah. Like, I think I think it's good. I think we wrapped it up. Um, Thank you all for your attention. Um, look into look into eCash. Uh, what's the domain? E.cash. E.cash. <laughs> very very <laughs> complicated. <laughs> yeah, and... no, but but I'm serious. Like look into it. Um, either come help us, 
uh, build that because like what is described in there is very much what we are building, but decentralized. And um, I mean, I, I think that's very important because this, this is the end of financial freedom over a decade or two. This left mean, unchecked in the times in the, within the time span of two decades. Yeah, yeah, with with yeah. like yeah, with I would expect like in a decade, right? But maybe two if it's mm -hmm. lower than I expect, right? But like this left unchecked in time is the end of financial freedom. And basically, um, uh, like un <clears throat> irrevertible, right? Like what what you're gonna do, right? Yeah, I mean, like it, reverting that would be a complete overhaul of the financial system, which probably means that there is a financial collapse and, and like you really don't Many want to do that. Like I know, uh, yeah, I know that this kind of scenario is very much prompt up in movies and stuff like that. You have this glorious, but uh, like open history book, this is not fun. You don't want to do that. Uh, if you can have a transition that is more peaceful, that's way, way better. But, yeah. but we need we need to be working on that stuff because they are right like we need to be working on that stuff yep it's like uh basically my analogy is like uh satoshi like in his chamber discovered nukes and nobody knew before them before and then he was just like okay here you can make your own nuke like everybody can make their own nuke and then like everybody discovered that, oh, why don't we just do firecrackers instead, right? Like why, why are we building nukes? Just making firecrackers is much cooler, right? Uh, they make like cool sounds and whatever. And then like uh, the, the, the government realized, oh, wait a second, you can actually make nukes. And then they just like spend all their resources focusing on optimizing that, like, like uh, making it reliable, making it fast and everything. And meanwhile, we're still like firing firecrackers, like uh, doing nothing else. And at some point, they're like, okay. Well, yeah, it's not like we're doing nothing else. We are building more and more fancy firecrackers and different <laughs> colors and different size and different sounds. And they are prettier and prettier and fancier and fancier. And, and we can make like light shows with them and whatnot, you know, like, but, but the government is building nukes. This is, yeah. this is the nuke. Yeah, this is the Manhattan Project. And, and freedom people. Money. Yeah, well, except the Manhattan Project is like a defense project versus other power that presumably want like this is not against foreign power. Yeah, this is against everybody that uses the U.S. dollar. But let's be real here. This is also against everybody that uses the euro and the yen and and whatever else. Right, every single one of those currency is going to have their version of this. And they have a huge incentive to do so. Like, why yeah. wouldn't they? And, right? and, you know, like, we just cannot wake up in five or 10 years and be like, this is outrageous. Or oh, can they do that? Oh, the government is evil, right? This is no <laughs> that we build alternatives. It's like, oh, no, like, <laughs> like the same with conservatives on government schools, right? So it's like, <laughs> We're sending our kids to be educated by our political enemies, uh, effectively. Uh, how come that it's turning bad? You know, well, <laughs> why, are, why are they all leftists? Why are they all communists? <laughs> I sent my kid to college and now she's a blue haired communist. Like, huh, what happened? They're like, the government is so evil. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I think that's a good ending. Uh, E.cash, check it out um it's good tech it's also what lotus uses like we're backporting the changes there and i'm like thank you amory for for like doing that like i, I think like few people like uh thank you for like <laughs> your like just continuing right like people like throw a bricks at you and it is like uh, i guess i gotta continue but i think we yeah but but the significance when you see that this is necessary but but indeed that is very frustrating because i see people that want to defend liberty and freedom and at their heart they right? say very much that they do and i believe that in them like like they actually want to do that right and right now they are being distracted 
by cool project with fancy colors and and funny noises uh, and I, I don't want to shit on those projects because I mean fancy color and funny noises are also like very important uh, um, like building cool stuff is important but this is the future of financial freedom and anyone that is liberty minded and think about central banks and whatnot need to realize that the fancy colorful stuff that we have right now in crypto they don't scale and because they don't scale at scale the way you use them is through custodial or other sub party other intermediaries that is what is happening like paypal like coinbase right that, that's the exactly it already and happened that's the norm right <laughs> that's the norm for many of those systems and As a result, they have the same problem. Like they're gonna have the same problem as the old system because, because the problem is the intermediaries. The problem is that we don't have digital cash, <laughs> yep. right? We have physical cash, but it's going away. So what are we gonna use? Um, it's, it's exceedingly important because once one party can monitor all the transactions, one party can exclude people completely from the economy, right? With a few computer keystrokes, your life is over. You have nothing and you can have nothing and you cannot transact with anyone. And they're already doing that, right? In a small scale. And this will just... Stamp it up yeah, it's like, like it's like what happened with GoFundMe for the Freedom uh, Convoy, right? Except it's the money itself, right? right. It, it's not like those people, they don't have a GoFundMe Like when you have a bill, anymore. right? Like a hundred dollar bill, they don't have, and you want to hand it over. They don't have dollars anymore. They don't have access so like to imagine, dollars. Imagine the equivalent would be like you have a hundred dollar bill and you want to hand it over to someone, but there's like a force field that like, like burns it or like puts it back into your pocket or whatever. That's like yeah. the equivalent of, of this one. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so we got to work on this. We got to work on this because we want to have an alternative. We cannot be fighting the thing. Like if you fight the thing and you have no alternative, you, 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 like you do nothing. You just complain about the Federal Reserve all day long on Twitter. <laughs> that's that's all you do. But but the Federal Reserve is going to do and what the, the Federal Fed. Reserve does. I mean, of course, and the Fed. Right? But NFTs is not how you right? end the Fed. No, the way you end anything, be it the Fed or anything else, is by building something better, right? And, and we can because that technology, it's open. It's been in the open for many years. It's been proposed for many years. But now we need to realize, like, this is how you scale a blockchain, and they are doing it. And now we need to do it. All right. So our third attempt at ending this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> ciao, ciao, everybody. <laughs> Auf Wiedersehen. Bye.